Today, we're talking about wire size. This is a topic that a lot of people seem to get wrong, especially people new to the hobby and people with a car audio background. I've done a lot of videos where I get comments down in the comment section about the wire size I'm using, mostly on subwoofers, but even on speakers. And I particularly noticed it on my last video about a Dayton Audio Ultimax subwoofer. I used this wire to wire up the subwoofer in the cabinet. This is a 16 gauge wire and inside the cabinet I went from the terminal to the driver and back to the terminal of course, positive, negative. And I had a lot of comments about, oh it's such a big driver you need bigger wire than that or something to that effect. Well I want to talk about that because I actually don't agree and I think I can share why and you might be able to learn something from that. So first I'm going to share a formula on the screen. This formula is basically the resistance of the wire is equal to a constant, which is the resistivity of the wire. We'll look at that in a second. It's different for all types of wire, um, copper, aluminum. It could be anything really. This is multiplied by the length of the wire divided by the area of the wire. The area of the wire is basically how, how big the wire is. Is it thin? Is it large? So uh, we're going to look at this in a little more detail. Okay, this is the formula that we're going to use to figure out resistance. I'm just going to quickly point out that the sound quality isn't going to be different between thicker or thinner wires. So we're just looking at resistance. Someone might say, well, a different wire with lower resistance might sound better, but I, I don't agree with that. You can, you can believe that if you want, but we're just going to look at resistance here. So resistance equals resistivity times length of wire divided by the cross-sectional area of the wire. So the first step is resistivity. This varies for different materials and wire types, but generally we're de dealing with copper wire. Some copper wire is going to have a lower resistivity than others. This isn't related to the thickness of the wire. This is related to the quality of the copper, how many strands are in the wire, is it oxygen free, is, does it have aluminum in it, you know, to make it cheaper, things like that. But generally we're going to use 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8 for our resistivity. And this is in ohm meters, and we're going to keep everything in meters. Okay, and the next thing we're going to look at is the length of the wire. We have our resistivity. Now we need how long of wire I used, which in the subwoofer that a lot of people commented on. I'm going to say we used about two meters. One meter from the terminals to the driver and then one meter from the driver back to the terminal because we have positive then negative. And then the final thing we need is the cross-sectional area of the wire. I used 16 gauge wire in this case. So the cross-sectional area of 16 gauge wire is about 1.31 times 10 to the minus 6 because you can see these units in this chart are in millimeters squared. I need to convert those to meters squared. So 1.31 times 10 to the minus 6 is our cross-sectional area. Now, if you're not comfortable with scientific units, which is the 10 to the minus 6 thing, I've put everything into standard numbers here. So what we have is we have our resistivity at 1.7 times 10 to the minus 8 times 2 meters of wire divided by 1.31 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared of cross-sectional area. So now we can solve this formula by simply putting the numbers into a calculator. And we get 0 0.026 ohms. Don't read that too quickly and think it's 0.26 ohms. We got 0 0.026 ohms. I believe this doesn't affect our power consumption to any reasonable amount. We're talking about usually a 2 ohm minimum, 4 ohm, subwoofer something like that maybe you car audio guys would use one ohm or half ohm subwoofers but um, even at a one ohm subwoofer adding 0 0.026 ohms of resistance is nothing you got to add the length of the wire from your amplifier to the subwoofer but you could use a thicker wire for that and i am going to concede that a thicker wire does make a big difference on this number let's quickly look at an eight gauge wire if we quickly punch in those same numbers for the cross-sectional area of an 8-gauge wire, you get 0 0.004 ohms. So that's significantly less resistance. But both of them 
are minuscule in the grand scheme of things. So if you had a long length of wire, like 10 or 12 meters, then a larger cross-sectional area does make sense. I don't think you ever need 8 gauge, but knock yourself out. So for people who don't like to do math, but kind of can understand what I'm getting at and maybe the concept makes sense. I'm just going to include a table right here on the screen that I quickly put together using this formula and an Excel spreadsheet to show you the gauge of wire versus how much resistivity you'll get based on a simple length uh, of, of wire. So maybe it's from your amplifier to your speakers, or maybe it's internal routing in your speaker cab. You can kind of quickly if you pause the video, you can see maybe your use case scenario and how much resistance you can expect. Maybe you do want to go up to a bigger gauge wire, or maybe that flimsy 18 gauge wire you have sitting in your closet can finally be used because it doesn't matter. So put it to use. Give it a purpose. Short video, hopefully helpful. I just really wanted to clear the air about that because, like I say, it does come up. I think people get kind of confused about it. But it's not as big an issue as we think it is, like many things in audio, to be honest. So take that as you will. Um, continue using zero gauge wire if that makes you feel better. Uh, otherwise, enjoy, maybe save a bit of money or use up that scrap in your closet. And thanks for watching, guys. Bye.